Um, Happy New Year to all of you who are joining the webinar series here uh, for the first time. Um, so good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending where you're joining us from today. And welcome to Engineering for Change, or E4C for short. Today we're very pleased to bring you the latest in our 2014 webinar series, the very first webinar in that series today. And we developed this webinar in collaboration with the WASH Tech Consortium, which was actually started with a number of amazing organizations, including the Water and Sanitation for Africa in Burkina Faso, the Network for Water and Sanitation in Uganda, Training, Research, and Networking for Development in Ghana, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Tech in Ghana, WaterAid in Ghana, Uganda, Burkina Faso, as well as European partners uh, such as the IRC in the Netherlands, the SCAT Foundation in Switzerland, and Cranfield University in Water and Aid in the UK. You'll be hearing um, uh, from a few of the representatives from these organizations today and uh, trying to pull everybody together from across the world is certainly uh, as expected, creating some technical difficulties. My name is Yana Aranda, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. When I'm not moderating webinars, I work with the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, or ASME, where I'm a senior program manager. So today's webinar, I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. So the title is From Technologies to Lasting Services, Identifying and Addressing Barriers to Sustainability, Fantastic topic. Um, WASH, which is an uh, acronym for water, sanitation, and hygiene, are key focus areas that you foresee. And we're always seeking to share insights about models facilitating the selection and integration of technology based solutions. To aid in this effort, we've invited today's presenters, Yul Smet, Andre Olszewski, and Benedict Tufour of the WASH Tech Project Consortium. We thank you all for joining us today. Before we get rolling, I'd also like to take a moment to recognize the coordinators of the E4C webinar series generally. Along with myself, we have Holly Schneider-Brown, Victoria Chung, and Alex Torres, all of IEEE, who work on developing and delivering the webinar series. Thank you so much, team. If anybody out there has questions about the series or would like to make a recommendation for future topics and speakers, we invite you to contact us via the email address visible on the slide, webinars at engineeringforchange.org. Before we hand things over to our presenters for today, we thought it would be a great idea to remind you about E4C and who we are. E4C is a global community of over 17,000 technically-minded members and more than 30,000 social, social media followers, such as engineers, technologists, representatives from NGOs, and social scientists who work together to solve critical humanitarian challenges, whether in WASH, energy, health, agriculture, or other areas faced by underserved communities worldwide. We invite you to join E4C by becoming a member. E4C membership provides cost-free access to a growing inventory of field-tested solutions and related information from all the members of our coalition, including professional societies such as ASME, IEEE, ASCE, SLE, and ASHRAE, as well as academic supporters like MIT's D-Lab, international development agencies such as USAID, EWB USA, and Practical Action, as well as access to a passionate, engaged community working to make people's lives better all over the world. Registration is easy and it's free. Check out our website, engineeringforchange.org, to learn more and sign up. The webinar you're participating in today is one installment of the Engineering for Change webinar series. This free, publicly available series of online seminars showcases the best practices and thinking of leaders in the field who bring innovative technology and solutions to bear on global humanitarian and development challenges. Information on upcoming installments in the series, as well as archived videos of past presentations, can be found on the E4C webinars page engineeringforchange-webinars.org. If you're following us on Twitter today, I'd also like you to, to invite you to join the conversation with the hashtag E4C webinars. 
Our next webinar will be in February, uh, likely at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, on the topic of emerging trends in social entrepreneurship. Please stay tuned to the E3C webinars page for updates on the presenters and registration details. If you are already an E4C member, we'll be sending you an invitation to the webinar directly. So that's a little bit more incentive for you to join us. So you'll get the invitation to the next webinar. A few housekeeping items before we get started. So I'd like to see where everyone is from today. I'll start with an example by typing where I'm dialing in from today. Very snowy New York City. Um, any technical questions or administrative problems should go in this chat window where I've just typed in my location. So let's see. The, where do we have folks joining us from today? Oh, looks like we have uh, some shy participants. Haven't seen it, the messages coming in yet. Um, also, feel free. Oh, there they come. <laughs> Just as I said that, thanks, guys. We have folks from Scotland, uh, some folks from New Jersey, probably getting a lot of snow today, too. All right. Um, very good. Thank you, everybody. Hey, feel free to also send a private chat to myself or Holly should you have any difficulties during the webinar. You can also use the chat window to type in any remarks. During the webinar, please use the Q&A window, which is located directly below the chat window, to type in your questions to the presenter. That way we can keep track of the questions as they come in. If you're listening to the audio broadcast and you encounter any troubles, try hitting stop and then start. If that doesn't work, you can use the call-in number for the teleconference. You may also want to try opening up WebEx in a different browser. Following the webinar, for those of you who are seeking to get professional development hours to maintain licensing, please send a request for a certificate of completion showing one CDH for this session by following the instructions on the top of the web page, um, which is on engineeringforchange-webinars.org. We have folks here from all over. So I see folks from India, from Texas, from uh, Massachusetts. Alabama, Ghana, but based in D.C., and so forth. Thank you so much. Uh, someone else from Tehran? Cool. All right. So in today's webinar, we'll be focusing on the critical pathway that follows after the design of WASH technologies to innovation and lasting services. Our speakers will discuss the rationale and provide an introduction to the technology applicability framework a technology introduction process, two new tools developed by the WASHTEC project. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to Yost Met, who is a senior program officer in the Africa team of the IRC International Water and Sanitation Center, and currently the manager of the WASHTEC consortium. Yost? OK, thank you very much. Welcome all to this webinar on tools for sustainable wash. That means water supply, sanitation, and hygiene services. I'm Jo Smet from the IOC Water and Sanitation Center and manager of WASHTEC project. We are glad to see that we have a good number of participants from the US, the Americas, Europe, and even Asia. Great. Thanks for joining this WASHTEC webinar organized by Engineering for Change. WASTEC is a project financed by the EU FP7 program and implemented by WaterAid UK and its country offices, Scott Foundation in Switzerland, Cranfield University in UK, and partners in three project countries. These are Water and Sanitation for Africa in Burkina Faso, Trent and Cairn UST in Ghana, and NetWAS in Uganda and of course the IOC, International Water and Sanitation Center in the Netherlands, where I'm coming from, and that is the project lead agency. What is the rationale for WASHTEC? Indeed, as you know, it can be challenging to assess if a WASH technology really has the potential to provide sustainable services 
and continues to work at scale. Despite large investments, promising technologies can and do still break down, unfortunately. Two new tools developed by the WASTEC project and tested in Burkina Faso, Ghana, and Uganda help identify blockages to sustainability using technology validation as an entry point. The Technology Applicability Framework, also called TAF, is a decision support tool that helps to assess if a specific WASH technology is applicable in a certain context. A complementary tool was developed, the Technology Introduction Process, also called TIP, that defines the roles and activities of key actors needed for successful introduction and scaling up of the technology in a country. What are the possible uses of TAF and TIP in the WASH sector? Of course, as a project and with the WASH sectors in the project countries, this was a key issue. The project had to make clear what was the potential use um, for the sector, and, and it was to be determined uh, by the interest of the sector. What is their buy-in? People in the country will, of course, ask, what's in it for me? Actually, four main uses came very clearly out, four main uses of the TAF and the TIP. The first one is for validation of new WASH technologies, so new WASH technologies for application in the country. Technology developers who want to get their technology accepted in that country, they approach national level ministries which will apply the TAF and the TIP. But the second use that came out was for validation of an existing WASH technology for application in a specific context. For instance, at a district or a sub-district level with a specific local, social, cultural, economic, and other conditions. Then the TAF is applied before a technology is being introduced at that decentralized level. Barriers to sustainability are being identified and can be addressed prior to local introduction of the specific WASH technology. The third use was as a monitoring tool to assess why one technology is a success while another one is a failure, and that can be both at local level and it can be at national level. Then hindrances and success factors are determined that will lead to choosing other, either another technology or formulating actions to do better. And the fourth use that came out was as a tool in a project, a program appraisal process in which the proposed WASH technology is being appraised for its potential to contribute to a sustainable WASH services. In this webinar, we have short presentations by Andrei Olszewski from SCOT on the TAF and the TIP. And another one, another presentation by Benedict Tufor from Trent on the TAF application in Ghana. The full program is shown on this slide. And now I'd like to give the floor to Andre to briefly introduce the TAF and the TIP. Andre. Thank you very much, Hugh. Uh, good morning. Hello, everybody. My name is Andre Olszewski. I am working at uh, SCAT Foundation in Switzerland as a water and environmental sanitation expert. The title of my presentation is From Wash Technologies to Innovation and Lasting Services. Uh, in my presentation, I will briefly introduce the two tools you has mentioned already, the underlying concepts, uh, which should help you to efficiently decide on what solutions, but also on how to take these solutions and technologies to scale. The two tools we have developed, the TAF, uh, and the tip are presented um, in, a, in, a, in a figure here on the slide. On the left-hand side, you see the TAF, which is on the uh, application 
of WASH solutions and on the assessment of the scalability of WASH solutions, whereas the TIP, the technology introduction process on the right hand side is more on the introduction. Uh, the two tools are complementary and the purpose, as you has mentioned, is, is different. So the TAF is a proper assessment tool, whereas the TIP is a guiding document. In my pre presentation, I will focus mostly on the TAF, but on both tools you will find all the documentation, all reports on a web link, which I show later at the end of the presentation. All documents are in the public domain and you can access them uh, for free. So what is the rationale we were actually dealing with. I guess some of you are in the WASH sector and the development context, others may be a little bit less. So the situation which we face in the sector is that too often key aspects for sustainability get forgotten in technology assessments. Uh, aspects such as affordability of users to pay for operation maintenance or the skill set which is not there to operate the technologies. But also often technologies are introduced without following clear and transparent procedures so that important actors get not involved uh, in the process or in time. And even more important, technologies are introduced where there is no need for these technologies or no demand. And lastly, we, we have seen in many case studies that there is little or hardly any exchange between the actors in the process, for example, from the piloting, which means there is little sharing and learning in the sector. So in the technology assessment and introduction, we don't see only issues around sustainability, but also poor linkages with respect to governance, accountability or innovation. And to overcome these issues and to come up with a robust tool, we developed and tested the TAF. So the TAF, as you mentioned, is a decision support tool for assessing applicability and scalability of a specific WASH technology uh, in a specific context. And the target users of the TAF include government at local and national level, the local private sector, local NGOs, international NGOs, development partners, academia. This is important because this will also define the design of the tool, the, the, the level of process and complexity of uh, how the tool works. This is exactly where we went to. We de deliberately defined an easy to use tool following a stepwise and participatory process and to get the data for the assessment. The, the whole process includes as well desk work, but also field visits and a workshop which involves all relevant actors, which means the users of the technologies, the provider or producers, but also the regulators or facilitators. I will go more in detail here. So how do we address these issues like governance and accountability in this tool? This is mainly done through three components a stepwise process, a uh, comprehensive set of indicators, and a transparent way of presenting the results. I start with the process here. So the TAF application follows a process in four steps. The first step is the screening. The screening, the purpose is to filter out those technologies where there is no demand, or where the, these technologies are not applicable, for example, for physical reasons. If you have a rainwater harvesting device and there is no rain, this is might be obvious, but there are less or more tricky aspects. If you pass the screening, you go for the assessment, which is followed by the presentation of results and later the interpretation and conclusion. So you go step by step, you document, and within all these uh, steps, most of the key actors are involved. 
I come to the set of indicators. In the tough assessment, a set of 18 indicators is used to allow a comprehensive assessment of the applicability and scalability of WASH technology. Because WASH tech and all the discussions about taking technologies to scale is not only about technologies, but it's also about the process, how you take the technologies to scale, whether there's uh, subsidies, for example, uh, the capacity of the supply chain and so on. So you don't focus only on the technology itself. It's much more complex. So on the slide you see a matrix of 18 squares with the indicators. But you also see on the left-hand side, on the vertical axis, sus the so-called sustainability dimensions, which include social dimension, economic dimension, environmental, legal institution organizational dimension, talk about skills and knowledge, and finally the technology itself. These six dimensions, they are the overarching sustainability concept from our part of view to capture the issues around technology and technology uptake. And the other axis you see particular perspectives of the key actors involved in the introduction and use of technologies. So you have the user of the technology or the one who's buying the technology, the first column. You have uh, the producer or provider in the middle column. And finally, you have the regulator and investment facilitator. And this, this uh, matrix produces a set of 18 indicators. So for example, if we go to the economic dimension and the user perspective, you come up to the indicator number four, which is affordability. And here, affordability means affordability of the user to pay for the capital investment costs or for minor or major operation and maintenance costs. If the technology is too expensive to be operated, it won't be sustainable on the long run. And this is, for example, one of the key indicators in our system. So here you see the 18 indicators. Now, how do you get to the assessment? For each of these 18 indicators, there's a set of questions with prepared uh, guiding and scoring questions in the questionnaire. In a workshop involving all relevant actors like governments, private sector and the users, these questions are now answered. And the data to answer these questions are collected from desk work but also from the field visits. And finally, the workshop participants agree on one score for each of the 18 indicators. And the scoring rule is very similar to a traffic light system. You see this on the right hand side. So green means high value, positive, supportive characteristics, where red is low value, negative or critical characteristics, yellow or zero we use, whether there is, if, if there is a potential impact or could become critical and which needs a longer follow-up. And if you don't have sufficient information to, to do a score, give a score, then we leave it black with a question mark and needs follow-up to clarify. So this is the scoring rule, and within the workshop, you go through question by question and put score by score, most likely by dimension. So each of the actors will, will come in. The users will be in the workshop and give in their voice. The producers are there, and also the regulator and, and facilitators. So all listen to the answers and finally agree on one score. And of course, it needs a proper uh, facilitation of the workshop to go through this process. The resulting scores are presented in, in a graphical profile, as you see on the slide. And as you can easily see, the, this profile is very similar to the matrix we have seen in the indicator matrix. So this profile and this way of presenting the scores offers you different entry points for interpretation. If you go by dimension, you can check very easily whether there is a particular dimension which is, which is critical, whether there are a lot of red or 
yellow dots, for example. You can do the same for the perspective and can identify particular actors uh, which, which have a critical profile. Or you can focus on specific uh, selected indicators for topics like operation maintenance. So, with this I would like to close my uh, presentation of the TAF and very briefly give some information on the second tool, the technology introduction process tip. It is a guidance tool, so descriptive, for supporting actors to plan, manage and monitor WASH technology validation and introduction. It is a generic tool which needs to be adapted to country procedures and uh, it is flexible in a way that you can adapt it to fit to different contexts, different cost models and any WASH technology. And with the term cost model we uh, mean the, the, the level and way, for example, the costs are shared between the users and other parties and here we call about transfers or uh, subsidies. For example, if there is no subsidy, we talk about market-based approach. In other cases, technologies are given away with the subsidy, but the operation maintenance costs should be covered by the users. So there are different cost models. Based on the analysis of different case studies on technology introduction, we have identified three phases which are key for the description of the introduction of technologies. And these three phases are the invention phase, the tipping point, and uptake and use phase. And as you can see in the figure on the left-hand side, the blue uh, line, this the, the number of units sold to the market are taken up by the market. And in the very beginning, you have a, a little number. And this might be the period where you do the testing, piloting, where you improve the technology and where you assess the feasibility of, of the launch. And if you come to a positive result, you prepare the launch. And these two sub-phases we call the, the invention phase. And if it's the right mix, the market will take up more units, which is then the blue part of, the, uh, of this um, figure, the tipping point and maybe you reach saturation in the green part after quite a long time. As you know, uh, technology introduction is complex. It needs a lot of actors to be involved and, and a lot of financial resources. And to get it right, you need a good description and uh, division of, of tasks. And this is exactly what the tip should provide for you. And based on the concept of the three phases, on the right hand side of the slide you see that for each of these phases we, in the tip we provide some generic description of the tasks of actors to, to, yeah, to support the introduction process. This works for water or for sanitation hygiene technologies and for different cost models. The TAF TAF could play a very relevant role in the testing phase for the feasibility, for example. But as you mentioned, it could also play a role as a monitoring tool during the uptake process. So, with this, I would like to close the presentation. Uh, but finally, I want to highlight that the TAF was rigorously tested on the ground in three countries in Africa, in Burkina Faso, Ghana, and Uganda in three rounds on 13 different WASH technologies. And also the TIP was used in the countries to develop uh, country-specific national guidelines for technology introduction. I think Benedict will give you more information on this. And now the TAF and TIP are taken up by national host institutions in each of the countries, but even outside WASH tech there are already institutions that work only with the documents and have applied the TAF, for example, in Nicaragua without any external support. So now I come to the end. Uh, if you want to find more uh, information on the tools, on the results of the testing, background reports, please go to the resource uh, website www.washtechnologies.net.
There you can find all the documents on TAF and TIP and background documentation. If you have specific questions, please feel free to drop a mail to me and so we can get in contact. I'd like to thank you very much for your interest. I'm happy to answer your questions, but now I would like to hand over to my colleague Benedict, who will give you interesting insight information on the application of the TAF in Ghana. Thank you very much. Okay. It's back to me, actually, Joost Met from the IRC in the Netherlands, because apparently the, the telephone line and the connection with Benedict Tuvor from Ghana uh, doesn't work. So we have a kind of an, uh, a contingency, a plan B for this. Um, of course, uh, I am based in the Netherlands, but I have visited Ghana uh, regularly, and I know what they have done in Ghana as a project manager. So I hope to to give a, a good uh, picture of the evolution of the TAF and the TIP in Ghana as one of the three countries. That's not me, that is Benedict who was supposed to, to be here. So the TAF and the TIP in Ghana, um, as I mentioned already, we have uh, three, uh, actually two implementing or three implementing agencies, that's correct, it's Trent with the Resource Center Network. It's a capacity building um, institution. Ken UST is a, a university in Kumasi and uh, Water Aid Ghana. So they worked with a number of sector institutions, uh, particularly the Ministry of uh, Water Resources, Works and Housing, and then the, the, the Water Directorate. Uh, CWSA, that stands for Community Water and Sanitation Agency, uh, the Environmental Hygiene and Sanitation Directorate in the Ministry of Local Government, the School Hygiene Education Program, and Kony Wash, which is an umbrella organization of uh, WASH NGOs in Ghana. And of course, they work with the private sector because it's all around technology. Uh, particularly tech technology developers in the country uh, and consultants who are uh, involved in this technology business. And, of course, also in the sustainability of war services. And allied projects were uh, SSSS and WASCAST. These are two major projects that IRC is implementing, amongst others, in Ghana, uh, both financed by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and they are very much around uh, sustainability of uh, water services and the service delivery. And wash cost is the costing of wash, you can say, and models they have developed around that. And we have used a number of their um, yeah, characteristics and their findings, their results in this program. The sector platforms that uh, were used in Ghana were the national level Learning Alliance platform. It's a uh, learning structure at the national level. Uh, they have them also at the district level, and sometimes they were also used. The MOLA conference series, that is an, uh, a conference yeah, in, in Ghana, what I said, um, which brings together many organizations, um, NGOs. They started with that, uh, the MOLA conferences but also development partners, government, and politicians, they all come together. Then you have uh, the Ghana WASH Forum, another platform for discussion that was used for the embedding of the WASH tech programs and other working groups that are there. Uh, the TOS testing in Ghana uh, was around seven technologies and as uh, Andre explained we, we were using various rounds to come to a good product, a good, a good uh, tool. Uh, of course, you don't have that from, from the very first round. You start with a draft and then you improve and you improve and, you, and we came together after every round and we, we improved um, the structures of uh, what you have seen as a final. Uh, the process involved indeed uh, preparation, uh, in these uh, testing rounds, uh, data collection and validation and scoring workshops. So 
uh, that was done, you can say, four times, and in the four times we applied seven technologies, so on average about uh, two technologies per round. Uh, the tough testing, as I said, was refined after um, after each uh, round, and uh, and the result is, as Andre was uh, showing, this kind of um, uh, visualization, this diagram with uh, the various sustainability dimensions and the key perspectives the users, the private uh, providers, the, the technology producers, and the regulators and the facilitators in the last column. Uh, actually, as a result, um, we have this diagram, of course, uh, but we also have a an, an, an technology brief, we call it, or recommendation notes that explains how we arrived or the group that applied it arrived at the green, the, the yellow, or the red, or the black uh, colors in each of these uh, um, circles. Um, and that also then, uh, after discussions, indicated what has to be done more. Really, is the technology um, promising for sustainable war services or not? If it is, but there are still a number of barriers, there are still a number of um, problems that have to be solved before you can really go ahead, uh, then these will have to be explained and have, of course, later on to be solved before the sector can really give a green light. And these all are being put down in the recommendation notes uh, for each technology. So you, you will see, we will give you later the, the, the link to a website where you find all these uh, technology recommendation notes, briefs, um, with all the scoring uh, diagrams for the, the, the 17 technologies tested out, of which we had seven in, in Ghana. How did the sector react to this uh, project? Actually, the feedback on the TAF was uh, very positive from the Ghanaian uh, wash sector. Uh, they said it's a comprehensive tool that helps to unpack the sustainability and, and, and check the sustainability uh, of the technology that uh, was being considered. They said this is long overdue and it has a great value uh, that the sector uh, will use. Um, the testing process has made the issue sharper and straightforward. Uh, in, in, in terms of um, yeah, sustainability of technologies, it's, it's, it's always a bit uh, vague. I mean, there are interests of different parties, and this uh, TAF is a neutral tool, you can say, um, which helps to, um, yeah, to, to make your conclusions neutral as well and, and how to go forward. It's a participatory approach and ensures transparency through questionnaires that we have that, that you further develop uh, for the specific context. And the, the workshop um, creates a, a transparent part participatory um, platform, forum. And that's important because we have been considering to do it in a, in a more uh, electronic way, in a more um, yeah, smartphone way, uh, but that would then you put all the data in a black box and something comes out and, and maybe people are also manipulating it in that process. It's a, it's a bit risky. So we, we um, got very good feedback on this participatory approach. Actually, it requires uh, some skills and, um, and uh, you, you have a process that is unbiased and effective facilitation will make that you get a good uh, results. So this is the top and the tip in, uh, in, in, uh, in the process where you have a new technology or an existing technology. Uh, this looks a bit complicated, but I mean it's rather simple. If you start here at, your, uh, at the top uh, left, that's the host, that's the, in this case the ministry, the CWSA and the Environmental Health and Sanitation Directorate. And uh, they get many applications for uh, you know, applying new technologies in the country and then 
they asked for a presentation on, on, on that from the, the, the manufacturer and then the discussion will come and a, a decision will be taken and they may say, okay, I mean, rethink your technology or even drop this at all. Or they said, okay, this is promising and we go for a pilot. Um, you select the communities, uh, you do some data collection uh, and, and, and monitoring and then you apply the TAF in full and then you get this, this scoring and you get also the, the recommendation for uh, adoption and again you may rethink your design, you may drop it entirely or the sector may say yes you can go for this and you can use the technology. When you, when you have an existing technology you don't have to start from the top because the, the country has already accepted the technology but it has to be tested in a specific context, in a specific district or uh, locality and then you have um, you can shortcut the, this whole process. Uh, taking the, the TAF and the tip forward in Ghana um, now what we said uh, the sector has uh, adopted it and that's great the hosts have uh, been identified at the CWSA and Environmental Health and Sanitation Directorate in the Ministry of Local Government. Uh, the official handing over is being uh, scheduled uh, to take place um, and they will upload um, the information uh, to the websites and legislation is going to come. Um, there is a, a huge demand, a direct demand for application of the TAF and the TIP, so there are already three technologies in the pipeline, you can say, new technologies that are going to be uh, uh, tested using the TAF. Uh, there is need, of course, for continuous technical support to build the, the sector uh, capacity. Okay, I will give the floor to Ayana, I think, uh, to uh, facilitate the question and answer se part session. Thank you so much, Yo. I, I really appreciate you uh, picking this up. Oh, well, we couldn't unfortunately hear uh, from Benedict, but we do want everybody to know that Benedict can hear us, thankfully. And uh, if you have a specific question uh, for him from the Ghanaian perspective, uh, then he will be happy to answer your questions via the chat function. So just FYI. <laughs> and with that, I'd like to open up the, the Q&A for all of our panelists. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so we do have one question, a couple of questions that came in already. <clears throat> so the question is, what modifications are needed to apply the task and to, to non-market-based technologies, uh, for example, municipal water system. Yo or Andre, would you like to tackle that one? Yeah, I can, I can uh, answer to this question. Um, actually, the TAF or the TIP, they are not limited to market or non-market-based technologies. So the, the scope of technology we, we had in the testing, it was the 13 technologies, they included um, road pumps, uh, so on very household level, VIP latrines, but even more complex systems like uh, uh, biosand filters for bigger water treatment systems. We had sand dams, we had um, solar piped, uh, solar powered pipe schemes. So I would say there's no need to adapt the TAF to this type of uh, like a municipal water supply. What you have to take into consideration is just to clearly uh, define the system you are looking at and then to um, to go through the process properly and to be very clear on what you are talking about. But as such, I think uh, you, you shouldn't need to adapt the, the TAF. Thank you. So <clears throat> you mentioned a couple of examples there, and uh, one question specifically came up. Um, <clears throat> if there was a prediction by the TAF or a determination that uh, a particular technology was uh, not suitable for whatever reason, uh, what have you had any outcomes in your test runs of uh, steps forward, and have any of those steps been taken, or uh, the tool uh, or the technology gone through another round of the task? Andre, do we take that? 
Yeah, okay, I, I can, yeah. Um, yes, so we, we did three rounds of testing, and some, in some um, rounds we had even the same technology, for example, the rope pump in all three countries in the same round. Uh, so finally, if we go to the country specific uh, results of the testing, uh, the, the technology briefs, you will see the, the, um, the profile and also the recommendation. And some of the recommendations are quite critical still because, uh, for example, the rope pump uh, in Ghana, um, there are some issues because some of the, for example, um, uh, the clients look for a higher level of support and service. So for them, the rope pump seems to be even minor. And this is exactly what the TAF uh, will, will work out if this type of technology and the service level provided will be sufficient for the need and the, the demand in a, in a given society, in a given context. But this doesn't mean that this technology will not be applicable and, and uh, will not have market response in, in a different context. Uh, so you, you, you won't get the answer, this pump is not working at all uh, in, in all over the country. It's more very specific to the context and the way you have introduced this technology that you have maybe um, some potential if you do X, Y, Z or there are a lot of risks because of A, B and C. This is the type of answer you, you get. And if you go to the um, technology briefs, you will get all the information from for, for these different technologies. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so may I add something? Oh, yes, please. please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think what Andre is saying is very correct. And um, the scoring resulting from the workshop is very important. So I think the question is very, very relevant. Um, because from that scoring and in the recommendation notes, technology recommendation notes, you find the, the obstacles, the barriers, but also the successes, of course, uh, of that technology uh, through the traffic lights. Um, mm -hmm. But we are most interested, I mean, also in the obstacles. What, what will be a barrier for a success? What will be a barrier uh, for a sustainable wash service? And, and these have to be taken away to before it's really giving a green light to a go ahead to, to apply it. Um, and it, if there's only one and, and, and the government and the users, because we don't know where the red light was, of course, um, say, okay, we can, uh, within a time frame of a few months, we can assure that uh, this is going to be green. Uh, now, then you can say go ahead. But otherwise, if there are uh, several uh, red ones and, and, and they still want to continue, you have uh, to go for another round probably uh, and in between the responsible agencies, that can be the users, that can be the government, the facilitator, it can be the private sector, have to take action steps to take uh, away the, the, the obstacle towards a sustainable uh, service uh, from that right. technology. So I think that is, uh, that's why it's a very, very good question. Thank you. Fantastic. And yes, and I couldn't agree more, and I'm sure our listeners couldn't agree more, uh, that uh, it, it's invaluable to really understand where the issue or the barrier to success really happened or what are some of these um, hurdles that are being faced. So uh, one of the things you said that is that uh, the incredible um, importance of the actors in, in the deployment of these particular technologies. So in terms of deploying a, uh, and having this effective application of a TAP, what would you say are the greatest challenges um, for the TAP adoption? Andre? Yeah. So for, for me, there, there's maybe one challenge apart from the funding. So I start from funding because, uh, as I mentioned, it's a participatory process. You go to the field and you have workshops involving all the relevant actors, which means you have costs. Uh, and based on the 13 different uh, applications, we come to an estimate of about three to 5,000 US dollars 
for one assessment of one technology in, in a region. Uh -huh. uh, maybe this this looks high, but if you compare this cost to sunk costs for poor introduction of technologies, this uh, isn't that high. Uh, the, the, the challenge I see is you need a good facilitator of the process because there are for sure vested interests uh, that might interfere in the process. So you need a strong independent uh, facilitator. But I, I think there are good people out there. That those are those are challenges I think that are are quite common just in general. So yes, I can I can appreciate that. Certainly, we had a few more questions that have come in. Um, so uh, we talk about these feedback loops, and and of course with the technology, trying to understand uh, you know the adoption requires us to go through the task, or it helps us to go through the task to really understand the barriers. Now, has the task its own feedback mechanism so that uh, as as you learn and you go beyond the trials that you've already conducted, that you'll be able to continuously improve on the task and tip itself. Yes, if, if I may say, um, what what we have been doing is to, to test the, the tool, develop mm -hmm. and test the tool in, in four rounds. And I think we, we have a, a good product. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it can be further adjusted and improved, and particularly uh, adjusted to to some specific um, context, countries, and and it can also be further adjusted for uh, a group of of technologies. I would say, if you are um, if you have more for an ex just to give an example, an, an a wastewater uh, treatment system. Um, then I think the questions that we have at the moment may not be directly applicable and they need to be converted to a set of questions that are suitable, sound for that technology. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why it is important to have in the testing an, uh, a research institution or a resource center involved. A host like a, like a government has not as a core business uh, the development of, of research tools or, or this, uh, this testing tools. So they, they may still come back to organizations like the partners we had in the countries to really further um, yeah, tailor make them um, the tool for that application that you have in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with, I'm just going to piggyback off of that question um, and that answer that you gave. Uh, Yo, with respect to those organizations that you already have indicated as partnering and familiar with the TAF and TIP, um, are you going to be continuing to build out the list of groups that are adopting the process so that as a resource for individuals or other groups that are looking to uh, either share knowledge or uh, go directly to these groups to uh, help them with adoption. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, this is very important for us. Andre, go ahead. On, on the on the web page, uh, washtechnologies.net, there are there's an area for exchange of experiences, and I would like to encourage all of you to use the TAF, but also to feedback your experiences and and also the critical uh, findings, because this is only uh, how we can learn and. I would be very happy to get in contact with you to learn and so that we can further develop the, the tools, definitely. Yes, and there are already a number of organizations that are scaling up, I would say, and scaling out um, the application of the TAF and the TIP. Uh, particularly WaterAid has been introducing it in Tanzania and in Nicaragua. There has been a, a great interest from uh, Water for People, uh, CSR. Um, the EU is interested in it, European Union, and they want to share it for consideration to the delegations in the countries. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's public domain now, and anybody can apply it. You will see later where you can find it on the website. Um, but of course, I mean, we are still open to give support and uh, we hope to get a good feedback so that we get a an, an dynamic product that is improving over time. 
Thank well, you. we are very pleased to uh, try and move the needle on that for you, and uh, we will be certainly sharing uh, this webinar as a recording with all of our uh, followers. Uh, for uh, We've reached the end of our webinar for today, and for those of you who are asking, uh, I see and the question came in. Thank you so much for that segue. Uh, there will be a recording of this webinar posted on the webinar page for Engineering for Change. Uh, for those of you who are interested, the professional development hour code is listed. If you have more questions that did not go answered today or would like to get in touch with our presenters, feel free to please email us at webinars at engineeringforchange.org. With that, I'd like to thank uh, Yo, Benedict, Andre, and Carmen, who uh, have been kind to join us today and share with us uh, the task and tip. Uh, we are thrilled to have you and thrilled to be part of the effort of promoting these really incredibly useful tools. So uh, thank you to everybody. We'll see you on the next webinar in February. And don't forget to become an E4C member to get information on that. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.